Coraline is a 2009 animated motion picture about a young girl in a new town that finds herself diving deep into her wildest dreams. That is, before discovering that life may not be so bad in the real world. Its animation and presentation at first glance could remind one of a Tim Burton movie, or more specifically, of The Nightmare Before Christmas. And even though this may be more of a film analysis slash film theory kind of channel, I still find myself having the sudden need, this urge, to talk about this movie after only recently just watching it for the first time. Hey guys, my name is DJ, and before we get into this conversation, I want to point out that this kind of movie feels very much out of my wheelhouse. When it comes to Tim Burton and these kinds of creepily animated children movies, I can't say I've ever been too fond of them. Don't get me wrong, I truly understand the charm and appreciate the raw talent it takes to make those kinds of films, but I just can't say that those films have really ever grabbed my attention before. I never really felt like I was in their target audience. These movies never really hit me with the same level of charm and intrigue as so many other kids of my generation. I don't know, maybe I was just a little bitch as a kid and didn't really take to the creepy visuals. A phase that I've grown out of, thankfully, because when I first sat down to watch this movie, I never really focused on the creepy animation. Instead, when I watched Coraline for the first time, I found a lovingly crafted, visually expressive experience that was interesting to every facet of my personality. Despite the fact that growing up this is exactly the kind of movie I would try to avoid, I still really found myself completely encapsulated by the experience. It's one of those movies that somehow grabbed my attention almost immediately just by how different and unique it was. Its visuals are appealing enough to make it stand out from similar movies with its darkest shades for the mundane world and its bright and joyous colors that are somehow still eerie in the other mother world. Its story is also just different enough to make every scene have a unique charm that is always in service of the overall narrative. And I really don't mean to say that in a negative way. I understand that from the way I'm speaking, it may sound like I'm saying that it's just different and unique enough to make it passable. However, do not be misconstrued, that is not what I mean at all. Instead of the whole movie feeling cluttered and confusing with each introduction, there is just enough detail in its writing, presentation, and animation so that every shot is full of this bizarre level of detail that is used to fuel the overall story further rather than be some weird waste of space. Almost every line in this movie is basically designed to help add to the story rather than just waste everybody's time. One huge example of this comes when the black cat, who can suddenly talk in the other mother world, says something like this. If you're the same cat, how can you talk? I just can. Now typically my over-analytic and overthinking mind would hate a line like this. Yet when writing the script for this video, I kinda kept coming back to it. And over time, I actually found that these seemingly throwaway lines were actually more beneficial to the story. Instead of the movie taking away from the joy of the experience with these long and boring explanations of everything, they instead use these very simple lines to accomplish a multitude of things. For one, this line is used to quickly get through that sort of narrative plot thread so that we can get into the conversation that really matters to the story since right afterwards the black cat starts discussing exactly how the other mother world seems to operate which is way more important for the story. But it's also there as a little seed for the more overly analytical members of the audience such as myself to find the true answer within the confines of the movie. An answer that after doing some research I actually found was in the movie. This idea is literally brought up and expressed by Coraline earlier on in the movie when she says this. Know it? Not talking, huh? That is, of course, before the cat can actually speak in this world designed to give in to Coraline's wishes. 
but it's also those kind of little set up and pay off lines that make me absolutely fall in love with this movie that much more. Seemingly insignificant lines like the black cat saying, I don't like rats at the best of times. Only to have that line reappear as a huge plot device later at the end of the movie is one of those things that overanalysts like myself absolutely love. So often are movies created with these bullshit lines that absolutely mean nothing. Lines that just never really play into anything. However, quite like its visual details, almost every line feels important and almost as a way to set up something later on, even when it's not obvious as to what that's meant to be yet. And yes, I do understand that I'm basically gushing about a movie that came out over a decade ago. And while I may be highly praising it, I do understand why some just may not like it. While I personally love the story, I can understand that there may be a bit too much for some people to grasp. After all, alternate worlds that may not be fully explained can be a bit off-putting. Sure, I understand that I overanalyze everything in a movie so I may love it, but that doesn't mean everybody does that. However, if we want to talk about actual negative reviews, let's talk about one that I just don't really understand. One of the most bizarre things I found in more negative reviews of the movie is the idea of this movie being, quote, too creepy. Now, even though I may look it, I'm not really that stupid. I understand why people would find Coraline a bit too creepy, especially in a kid's movie. However, my argument is that a, quote, creepy vibe isn't really a negative thing, especially when those creepy vibes are associated with the main antagonist of the story. Now, I don't really want to get into spoiler territory because, well, this whole video is why I think you should watch it. But I'll just say that the only real eerie vibes I got from the movie only came from the villains. You know, the people you're not necessarily supposed to like. Take most horror movies, for example. When the killer walks into the shot, that is when the creepiness starts to rise. If Pennywise made his way through the sewers without there being some creepy sounds or visuals, then we won't feel as frightened and therefore would be less supported of the protagonist since Pennywise appears more normal in the shot. Or if the Boogeyman from Nightmare Before Christmas didn't come out with all of these eerie bugs and visuals, then the audience may not be as quick to antagonize him. And speaking of Nightmare Before Christmas, let's talk about another reason why I wanted to make this video. You see, I can't deny the comparisons between these movies. Visually and tonally, they do feel very alike, yet even through the similarities, I found that I have almost opposite feelings towards these two movies. While they feel pretty similar and probably are targeted towards a very similar demographic, I found myself in a bit of an odd state. While I absolutely adore one movie, yet find that my feelings about the other can basically be summed up in meh. I mean, I like musicals, I like the sort of creativity from Nightmare Before Christmas, and I think Jack Skellington is one of the most interesting protagonists I've ever seen in a movie. But when it comes down to it, Nightmare Before Christmas, like so many similar movies, just never really grabbed me like Coraline. After pondering this one question for days on end, I think I finally found the real reason why I love Coraline and don't really have too many strong feelings toward Nightmare Before Christmas. In fact, the things I do like about Nightmare Before Christmas almost contribute to why I love Coraline. Like I said, I like musicals and the soundtrack throughout Coraline perfectly encapsulates the scene. And I mean, I've gone through the incredible level of detail and creativity already earlier in this video, but to top it all off, I just find Coraline's character to be so damn charming, clever, and interesting just like Jack Skellington. Not only that, but Coraline also cuts out a lot of the unnecessary filler that, in my opinion, Nightmare Before Christmas had a real problem with. Like I said, almost everything in Coraline feels both important and helpful to the overall narrative and world building. It grabs my attention like so many similar movies just can't. The animation, while creepy, is 
only seemingly creepy in the most appropriate moments, the characters are all distinct and expressive, and at the end of the day, Coraline is written with this absolute love and care that, when I first watched it, absolutely kept me engaged and entertained. Sure, even though Coraline may seem a bit too creepy for some people or may feel too similar to other kinds of movies in this genre, I will say that Coraline almost feels like a movie not only made for me, but hopefully made for you to enjoy. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I understand that it's mainly just me gushing about Coraline for an X amount of minutes, but I really stand by this movie and absolutely love it. But what about you? What do you think about this movie and my personal takes on Coraline? Let me know in the comments, but until next time, have a good day. Bye-bye.